um, staff and members of the public who are joining. Um, otherwise, um, we will keep your video off. All right, ready? Should I go? I think All right. So. Um, I call this meeting of the Sio Township Board of Trustees to order at 8.05. Recording in progress. It's okay, keep going. <laughs> um, we, are, we are holding this meeting in person, but we are still operating under the Washtenaw County Emergency Order, and this extends the option for members of the Board of Trustees to participate and vote Remotely, uh, the board has also decided to extend this option to members of the public for purposes of viewing and to make public comments. Uh, when the clerk calls the roll, those members of the board of trustees who are present at Township Hall need only indicate that they are present. If you are participating remotely, please state so and indicate your location by the municipality. Clerk Flintoff, please call the roll. Hathaway? Here. Palmer? Here. Flintoff here, Porto. Present in Ames, Story County, Iowa. Thank you. Jerome? Here, Sio Township, Washtenaw County. Noel? Here, Sio Township, Washtenaw County. And Vogel, who I know is on her way, um, will be joining us soon. And we'll, I'll note the time that she arrives when she does. We have quorum. Great. Um, our the purpose of the meeting this evening is to um, uh, work with our um, consultant who's leading the search for the township administrator, um, and that's Amy Sell. And um, so I will um, sort of defer to you, Amy, in terms of how you would like to structure the time. We do have to include uh, time at the end of the meeting for uh, public comment. Great. Thank you so much for everyone taking the time and, and being here and being so thorough in this process. Um, my suggestion for uh, our activities for the evening would be to uh, do a few things. Um, one is to identify the finalists that we would like to move forward with interviews on October 5th and 6th. Um, the second thing is to finalize the details for that event, those ex interviews, um, and to determine uh, generally there's a staff panel or it could be a staff forum. There's also an opportunity to involve the community in terms of a community panel or forum. The forums the difference between the interview panels and the forums would be with the interview panels, um, a panel, a group of six to eight interviewers would be selected. They would be provided guidance in terms of que and sample questions to use um, in terms and they would provide specific feedback afterwards. Uh, if we did forums, the questions would be provided to me in advance and the participants would be able to listen to the candidates responses to those questions, but would not ask questions. Um, in all manners, the participants can provide feedback via a community survey or a staff survey. Uh, members of the public are also able to watch the interviewer, the interviews that take place with the board because those will be done in a public setting. Um, on October 5th and 6th. And so members of the community can also provide feedback via watching those public meetings as well. So I would like um, guidance from the board in terms of the structure of the interviews to take place. Um, and after we determine the finalists, I might have more guidance depending on the number of, of finalists. But I did want to mention that those are my two goals uh, to leave this meeting with a list of finalists and the preferred interviewing format. Great. I don't think there's any objection to that agenda. Um, how would you like to, I'm assuming you want to proceed in order. Um, how, how would you like to proceed with identifying the finalists? Great. 
Um, so there are. I'm, I'm sorry. I guess we. I guess we do need to formally adopt that agenda. Um, um, perhaps um, just I, I move the adoption of the agenda as um, proposed by our consultant Amy Sell. Support. So we have um, moved by Hathaway, support by Palmer. Please call the roll. Hathaway. Yes. Palmer. Yes. Lintoft. Yes. Porto. I'm sorry. Um, did you say me? I did, Jackie. Sorry, the, my sound is really garbled. Uh, yes. Thank you, Jackie. Jerome? Yes. Noel? Yes. And welcome, Jane. I saw you came in a moment ago. Did you hear the motion? I, I did. Okay, and you vote to approve? Uh, yes. Great. Agenda adopted as presented. All right, uh, Amy, um, turn it back over to you. Great, thank you. Um, so I have, we had 58 applicants and of those applicants, 13 of them, we are, we have shared with the board of trustees. Um, what I would like to do at this point is to identify, get feedback from the board on which applicants the board would like to get to know further via interviews. Um, so my suggestion is that I go through them in numeric order that was on identified um, on the information that I provided earlier. And I would like to get uh, kind of an indication from each board member on each candidate if there's interest in moving forward with them as a first step. So the first- okay, I I need to say that I've got to catch up with the numeric references. Where do I find those? That would be in the link that I sent. Yep, early. I'm in that link. I'm I'm in all the documents, and I see the 13 candidates. And they have numbers in the left column. Yep, in column A. Um, are, are you look, there's two there's two links. Are you looking at the one with all of the documents, yeah. or are you looking at the spreadsheet? I am, I'm looking at the one with all the documents. So let me get folder shared with you. I'm and Amy, sorry. That would you be so kind to just describe for our public um, the you know request for confidentiality and why we're going to be talking about this without people naming people tonight? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, so, um, and Jane, I just shared with you the link to the document. Excellent. Thank this you. This is the summer shoot. Sure. Yes, I've been sharing way, way too much lately with everybody. Um, <laughs> yeah. Such a good thing. Yeah. So, so there's um, a variety of um, laws. The, the The Open Meetings Act does provide certain exceptions, and one of those exceptions under Michigan law is that if a candidate requests confidentiality, uh, the contents of their application can be done privately. And discussions around considering that moving that person forward into interviews can be done in a manner that, provi that provides confidentiality. Um, in these key roles where people are serving the public, oftentimes they are in a similar role in a different community. And to be, uh, have their, uh, for it to be um, done, known widely at the beginning of the process would be a deterrent for many candidates from seeking that type of opportunity. So um, to provide them with confidentiality, there is a, a provision under the Open Meetings Act in Michigan that allows that, uh, which is a, unique to Michigan. So some um, other states have it a little bit done differently. But once the candidates are identified coming out of this meeting, we will be confirming with them tomorrow that they are still interested that nothing else has changed and then be gathering bios and sharing that broadly so that the and then from everything from this point forward is done in public the interviews will be done with the board of trustees will be done in public um, and any deliberations regarding candidates will be done in public um, some communities decide to do this in a closed session uh, but this board has decided for transparency to let everyone um, kind of see the action, although we will be using 
numbers and not using identifiable information to protect the confidentiality of the candidates. Thank you, Amy. Great. Thank you. All right, so candidate number one. Um, I don't know, I can, I, can see P, I can see four of you. So if I see a hand raise, I could go by that. But then I don't know if um, uh, board member Jerome or board member Cretreau want to use a thumbs up or some other indication, or I can do it verbally as well. Um, maybe maybe um, verbally would be good, at least for Jackie, um, and, and maybe Alec as well. They, I think they're having an unstable internet. Okay, all right. So maybe, um, so, of, so for candidate number one, is there interest in getting to know that candidate better? All right. Can I ask a question? Please. Yes, of course. So this was a candidate who had some interesting experience, but I noted that there was a news article included in the packet about a sudden departure from a previous job. And I, um, you know, which, which might be a cause for concern or might be very understandable. And I, I was just trying to, do you have any further context around that? We tried to provide all contexts that we could identify in the phone interview notes. We asked the candidates to go through their career transitions to try to get to that area as in particular. I guess I just remain concerned about just very minimal responses to the questionnaire. This this candidate didn't rise to the top of my list. That seems to be a consistent theme, so I will note that. Um, mm -hmm. Candidate number two, are, is anyone interested in getting to know candidate number two better through interviews? I've got, looks like two. I um, am. And then a yes from myself as well. Four, all right. Candidate number three. I'm gonna wait a second, I gotta go back and catch up here. Oh, sorry. Oh. Toggling in between screens. Three, oh yes, okay. All right, I got one, two, two people interested in candidate number three. Oh, wait a minute, I gotta make sure it's the right one. Just let me go back to my... And Amy, yeah, on I'm sorry, we're on three. Amy is a yes from me for number three. Right. Okay. And, three. and yes from yes from me. Kind of okay. Okay. Alec. I'm kind of on the fence, I guess, about that one. All right. Can, we'll Amy, go. is it appropriate to, to discuss her all, or you just want to know if there's at least one person who wants to bring forward? Um, yeah, I'm just trying to get a sense of okay, the level of interest for the first. So it sounds like we've got three to four people interested in that one. How about candidate number four? Oh, oh my gosh. Hang on. Four. Oh, yeah. I've got Definitely. four, five, six. All right. Candidate number five. Mm, let's see. I've got to find my notes. Let's see. Looks like zero. Amy, could I ask one clarification? I believe there was one added. Will that be 13? Yes. Just okay. I just want to make sure. Okay. Thank yep. you. Right. Candidate number six. All right. Candidate number seven. Looks like I have one. Candidate number eight. 
Hold on. I need to check something, Amy. My sequence went off here. Okay. And I don't know what happened. I've got to go back. Sure. I do have my hand up. Just. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, I'll Canada. Jackie. No, Jackie. I'm sorry. I, I just meant I wanted to make sure I was counted. Great. Thank you, Jim. So I got, I think, one, two, three, four, at least four for candidate eight. Right. Candidate number nine. I've got to go find that. Hang on a second. I'm on, on the fence. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't want to bring the person forward if no one else does. I'll go with point five for candidate number nine. Yeah. Candidate number 10. Um, I've got, looks like three. I would be yes on candidate four. 10. Four, okay. Uh, candidate number 11. 11. Looks like maybe th three. Donna, were you with? No. No, okay. So I'm, I'm going to go with two then for candidate number 11. Candidate number 12. Yes, from me. Looks like three for candidate 12 and candidate number 13. Yes, from me. And I've got three, four. I guess I'm kind of on the fence about this, this one. I've got three and a half. Okay, so I have candidate number four has six votes. So it's kind of the first tier. Then candidate number two and 10 would be kind of our, have at least four. So I would definitely recommend moving forward with those candidates. Um, we didn't have any interest in candidates one, five, six. Um, candidates seven and nine had one or less votes. Um, so I'm for- What about, about candidate eight? Um, yeah, right. Oh yes, candidate eight is at four votes as well. So that would be, so I would, I would definitely consider I'm trying to figure out the, the top and kind of the two ends of the, the scale there. Um, so it looks like there's four can candidates, two, four, eight, and 10 um, would be one tier. I think the candidates that are, are two or less um, are probably another tier. And then we have candidates three, candidates 12 and 13 that had either three or three and a half. So I, I, I would like to focus the discussion in two areas. The first area is for the candidate for candidates number seven, nine, and 11, which did not generate as much interest. Does anyone feel strongly about still including them or would people feel comfortable um, not moving forward with those candidates for those people that did indicate interest in them? Okay. I'm okay. <laughs> Dropping them. Okay. I would be comfortable as well dropping them. Okay. I really thought that person would be great for another position that we have offered, our, <laughs> uh, our project manager position. Could we suggest that? <laughs> we definitely can. We definitely can provide feedback, yes. 
Yeah, I was thinking number 11 for that position. Great. Yeah, actually, uh, both of them. I, I, there were two or three of these people who I thought. Yeah. 11 and 6 were my project managers. Yes, I said that. 6 too. Yeah. All right, good to know. We will see what we, we can do to, there's obviously a lot of interest in Sio Township and we'll see what else we, we can when do this group of, of people. Okay, so that brings us to a group of candidates, numbers three, 12 and 13 to discuss. Um, another thing we could think about is with the first group of four candidates, I mean, interviewing, you know, interviewing seven people um, is not out of the question. Um, we do have Tuesday um, between uh, the October 5th, between seven and 10 and Wednesday between seven and 10. So um, we have enough time already allocated with the board of trustees to do seven interviews. Um, generally, interviews could be done in a, in 45 minutes with a uh, like a five minute break in between. Um, so that's because my my view on this is it's you know there there's a great opportunity to get to know people better and once we uh, and there's so much more that you like I tried to provide a fairly thorough background around the candidates. But um, getting staff input, getting the community input, getting to have direct conversations with these candidates will provide a wealth of information. So um, I am very comfortable moving forward with seven, or we could focus discussion around the um, three candidates, numbers three, 12, and 13, to um, see if there is interest in moving it to a, a lower uh, number of people to bring back in, but I'll def I'll open mm -hmm. that feedback that that discussion item over to the board. Yes. So, Amy, I'd like to clarify. Just going back and forth between the screen. I don't know. Maybe I'm not like firing on all cylinders, but I just want to make sure I'm tracking everything. Candidate two, four, eight, and ten. We are definitely going to interview. That's my recommendation. Yes. Seven and nine got one or less. Yes. And then one, five, and six seem to get bundled. One, five, and six got no. Yeah, they did not get any. any my, okay. my, okay. And my count was so they did then, not get any interest. Right. And then what, then what, what draws our attention to three, 12, and 13? Did they get both? Did they yes, get so they got three or three and a half votes. I see. That's that's where we are. That's that's the piece I missed. Thank you. Yeah, and especially because the other of of the other candidates, one was at six and three were at four. So there's a really fine line between four and three, and that gets me a little concerned that we're not you know, that there's, there's more we should learn. And especially with at least three people interested in getting to know any of these candidates, I um, am very comfortable moving forward with the seven so that you can all get to know them better. Great. Okay. Uh, Trustee Noel. Yes, Amy, I have a question. So, when these dates were set up, I had indicated that I have a conflict on October 5th because there's a card meeting that night. And it's a significant meeting. There's a lot going on there. I don't know if I'm going to miss it or not or go to part of it and go to part of the interviews. But, you know, that's going to pose a dilemma for me. Will was aware of this. So I'm wondering, could we stack the second night more heavily than the first if we're going to do seven? So that if I have to miss the first hour or two of the interviews, I can get most of the interviews in. Definitely, definitely. Um, there, there's, 
another option, I, I should have uh, brought the schedule with me. My memory is that on the second night, um, we offered two times. Uh, one was a four o'clock start and one was a seven o'clock start. And I think after, um, cause we had, we had, um, Kathy, originally we had one board member who couldn't attend on both of those nights. So we were losing you on one night and losing, I think Jane on the other. Jane was able to change her schedule to be available on the second night um, or the second date. But originally, I think we'd offered either a four o'clock or a seven o'clock start. So right. if, 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 yeah, if we could, if everyone's available still from four o'clock on, one option would be to sort of do a marathon on the second night and that way we could accommodate your schedule. That'd be good for me. I'm fine going on the sixth from four on, if that makes sense, Amy. Yes, I, Amy. What's your experience doing? Have you? What's your sense of seven interviews? Is that effective for for one evening? Um, it is. It's it's wow. going to be focused on you all. Um, the can because the candidates are only going to, especially if we do it via Zoom. Um, yeah. Then. I think it's it, it's going to be easy on the candidates, and I think also you're after the if we do Zoom um, interviews with staff and you know if we get involved the staff and the community. Um, in addition to the interviews, you're going to get a lot of feedback from staff and the community members about that'll help. So if you do get a little bit tired and in interview six or seven, um, and you will get a lot of other data points back to help you make the decision. Um, and it was also with bringing in seven candidates, what will likely happen is, or what I, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised happens is that there are maybe two or three that you really want to bring back again, if, if that, or it could happen that one is just absolutely perfect, but you also, I mean, we, we do this process so that you all are comfortable with every step. Um, so we you know we'll, I think getting to know seven will be a great next step. And then we will have a, a deliberation meeting in public to decide what to do after, with the results of that information, which again could be to go you know, pursue an employment agreement with a candidate, um, or it could be to have a second round or, or it could be that none of these candidates were a good fit and then we, we start over. So all those options are always open to the board. Um, as we go through this journey. I just want to um, verify probably with, with Alec, Amy, but everybody that we couldn't start any earlier than four on the sixth. Is that true? Yes, I couldn't start earlier. Okay, thank you. And Amy, in terms of the sequence, am I understanding your process correctly that the board will do the, the full interviews, but not deliberate. So we wouldn't really be taking the time between no. to deliberate. And then um, we would have a process with staff to do their interviews or assessments, community, whatever it is. And then we would have a meeting to deliberate. Is that your then, idea? Yes. And okay. it would be on the same day. So if so if we're targeting this the Wednesday the sixth, then I would set up staff meetings to happen during the day because that's when <laughs> staff is it's part of their day, um, and so I would schedule those meetings to happen um, you know, via Zoom. We would coordinate those panels. Those you know we and we could do a, a panel or kind of a forum. Um, I would like guidance from you all on which you would prefer. But either, both of those can be very effective, and then, um, as, and then also in terms of um, community involvement. So there's an opportunity to do um, a community forum. We could even do community forums on the fifth or a community panel. Those are not open to the public, um, but the public meetings on the sixth would be. So I know I'm throwing a lot of different options uh, options here, but. Um, you do have choices, but we do the, the feedback will all be gathered by me as quickly as possible. Um, 
and then provided to you on probably that by that Friday. And then there would be uh, my recommendation would have a would be to have a meeting the following week. Um, maybe there's a regularly scheduled board meeting on that Tuesday where you would have you could set aside a portion of that meeting to discuss next steps. But you would have all this information to have over the weekend to kind of review yeah. um, as well as reflect on, on your experiences. I think that sounds great, Amy. Um, I'm comfortable going ahead with the, the seven interviews on the sixth. Yeah, the sixth. I think with the staff, um, you know, take some time to to talk with staff and make sure we we catch everybody. I I know that most people will want to join by Zoom, but since all the staffs here in the office, if anybody does want to um, come in person, if they feel comfortable, no pressure. But I'm sure that the staff would be much more comfortable meeting in person than using Zoom. Uh, it's it's um you know something uh, some of our staff have even less experience with than we do. Um, and in particular, um, just because we've got different shifts with our utilities and fire folks too, it's gonna take a bit of coordination. And one thing that has worked well in the past is like a meet and greet with staff as well, especially with, that can be done informally um, in person, you know, or in Zoom too. I mean, that's- Yeah, we could be outside or, you know, whatever. We, but yeah, but and I can if I get direction to just coordinate an informal experience with staff, um, staff can then use the feedback, their insights from that experience, as well as by watching the public meetings to provide feedback um, to me that I would then consolidate and provide back to the board. So all of these candidates are available to, to come in person? We don't know. That I do not know. Okay. We did provide them the interview dates. Um, and so um, that is a possibility for them to be in person. Um, Trustee can, Vogel. Can I just ask a clarifying question again? Yeah. I think Jacqueline had a question and I'm happy to go. Go, go, go ahead, uh, Trustee Corto. Oh, okay. So, Amy, I'm sorry. I was trying to keep track of the different options. So you mentioned a forum or a panel, and then these very a meet and greet with staff, a community forum. Can can you just? I I didn't quite catch all of those different options, and who would be involved with them? Could you just briefly review those again, please? Sure. Sure. So I think on, on the staff side, I think we have determined that kind of an informal meet and greet is the way to go. So on the community side, um, I have one option is to have community members form an interview panel and ask questions of the candidates and provide formal feedback. Another option is to invite members of the public to have kind of an informal meet and greet. We could do it outside, I mean, especially for candidates that are coming on site. And if we wanted to do something outside that's socially distant, early October, the weather isn't bad, that's an option. Um, with Zoom, um, I've done small group discussions where we identified people ahead of time and invited them into that forum. So I've done a few, um, different things to engage the community um, in a, a kind of a structured and vetted way, um, as well as all residents, all community members have the option to view um, the, the, the uh, public interviews with the board, um, you know, via the regular channels. Thank so maybe you for that clarification, I appreciate it. I'm sorry. Hopefully I didn't make it even more confusing. Sorry about that. <laughs> Lots of info. Trustee Corto, I can't really see you, so I don't know if I, I can't sense from a visual cue Thank whether you. you're, you've, you've gotten your question answered. Thank you. I did. And I, I mean, even without the video, my sound is garbled, so I don't even dare try the video. <laughs> but yes, that was good. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Vogel. 
Okay. So again, I'm just wanting to confirm I'm tracking this. So it sounds like the day is coming down to Wednesday the 6th. Some kind of engagement with staff during the day, some kind of community forum during the day. The board interview of all seven candidates begins at 4 o'clock. And that's the process I want to focus. And then the other thing I think we're deciding is we would continue the deliberate, the, the, whatever next step we're at, we would continue at the October 12 DOT. Okay. So now yes. I want to go back and understand the interview process. What, with the board interview process, we, um, we're going to be cycling through seven candidates. Help us sort of picture how that plays out. Sure. So um, you will be receiving um, a packet of information from me that will have the interview schedule. We will be touching base with the candidates after this to set up the schedule uh, based primarily upon their availability. Um, then once that schedule is nailed down, we will provide uh, guidance on interview questions to board members um, since there's certain questions that are inappropriate and we want to make sure that everybody has some training around appropriate questions. We will also provide sample questions based on the topic areas that we are focusing on, such as financial acumen, project management, leadership skills, communication skills. So you will also have a list of questions in those different areas. We, we will also give you a note sheet to take notes on in those different areas. And then um, I will be, we will be sending you a, another link uh, where you will provide um, evaluation feedback to us on the candidates that we will then summarize and share with the full board. Um, that sounds really great. Cool. Yay. Okay. So um, the general way that an interview works is to do it in kind of a round robin where each board member has an opportunity to ask one question and then you, we will go through it for the allocated time. I have seen some interviews where you, the group only gets through one question because people are um, more either communicative or I wouldn't say long-winded, but sometimes they tell lots of examples and, and sometimes there's follow-up questions that I think are appropriate to ask as long as they're not inappropriate questions. Um, but then there's some people that are very concise and I've seen interview groups run out of questions. Um, so it will really, you know, depend um, in how that is. But yeah, so that's, in general, so we try to prepare you uh, the best we can to um, have a, a thorough ex and relatively but, organized experience. Then just a quick follow-up question. And that is, so we get this set of questions, but then it would be up to uh, Supervisor Hathaway and the board to sort of allocate those questions out to the seven of us. Would that Usually, be typical? Uh, usually what I've seen is that um, um, usually it is not that I have not seen that be the case. I have seen um, each board member would have areas that they're very interested in, either because it's a particular area of it. So Donna might have, uh, not to pick on Donna, but she might have some finance questions that she really wants to focus on. Um, and then somebody else might be very focused on communication skills. And so they want to make sure that those questions get asked. Um, it, it is good to make sure that because they the framework of criteria is something that you want to get comfortable with. So if someone is coming and they've been a former finance director and they're a CPA and you figure, OK, I don't have to worry about their finance skills, but I really want to learn more about their leadership style. Um, and so maybe, you know, so it's, um, I think by having each board member focus on their priorities and their areas of questions or concerns about a particular candidate within the framework uh, provides an experience where you can all feel as comfortable as possible about the candidate because you've been able to hone in in the areas that you might not be sure about. Be, um, in terms of what they've demonstrated and what I've been able to present so far. We, we can sort out the questions and how we want to organize that ourselves um, based, right. on, you know, based on, I, I think there are some norms for conducting interviews um, in Sio Township that I've seen in the interviews that I've been a part of and, and attended. 
Um, so I, we can we can figure that out. Um, Trustee Noel. Yes, Amy, I have a question. So in the past, when we've interviewed manager candidates, we have all had assigned questions and we've done a round robin. Um, I like your idea of letting us kind of choose the questions in our areas of interest, but would you want us to at least start and try to ask the same questions that in our areas of interest of each candidate so we can see how they respond to the same question? I think that makes sense. And that's often what will happen where people do have an area. And that's why I do provide questions in advance on the topic areas that in that framework that we talked about before that I presented before so that um, you do have sample questions to use so that they are, con they can be consistent. Um, I know I, 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 know of other situations where the protocol is we ask the exact same questions in the exact same way because we don't want to look like we are treating one candidate differently than others. Um, the experience I've had in other communities is that each candidate is unique and asking candidate and asking questions to get to know um, the full candidate um, because they are different and they are going to have different experiences is acceptable. Um, so it's, it's not like a legal requirement. Again, other communities have um, worked closely with their attorneys to do it in different ways. But again, if you have a norm of having the same questions and having it scripted, I'm, that's completely acceptable also. Um, Clerk Flintoff. So to go back to kind of finalize a, a process, I just, um, for the six is, you know, when I imagine doing an informal meet and greet with staff and an informal meet and greet with community and getting feedback from them all in one day before starting interviews at 4 p.m., um, you know, that, that seems like a lot and a little bit of a clash. I would want to um, reserve the day uh, for staff. And I would say at this point, prior to um, board interviews, I don't think having the community interaction with candidates is um, critical. I would like to get that feedback later, but what I'd like to do, because everybody works different schedules and um, I'm, I'm, I'm sure most staff, you know, with an informal meet and greet, um, certainly wouldn't be comfortable speaking to the candidates if public were present. And that kind of would inevitably happen, I think, with the informality. So um, I would suggest reserving the day for the staff, um, along with some sort of flexible and formal format, whatever you recommend, but in a way that they can document their, um, you know, scores or whatever it is, you know, take the job description or whatever it is and mark it up um, so that we have that information for consideration. What, what I've done in the past for in-person events is to have a, a little sh summary sheet where participants can just write on it their feedback about different yeah. things. It's, it's open-ended. Yeah, very simple form. Um, yeah. They turn it in. We summarize it and provide that to you. Um, you know, in the next few days after we you know gather, so you won't be getting. Yeah, the board will not be getting it prior to the interviews. You'll be getting it. That's fine. Within two days. Yeah, and then and then I would say I would want the, you know, input and feedback from the community um, after. We've done interviews. We did a community meet and greet for a very public facing job of the fire chief, you know, which is a little different um, than administrator. Um, and so, so that we did with, I think the final three or four people we were going to interview. Um, but that was also, you know, pre COVID and things. And so I, I would suggest that we get the community input you know, somehow if there's a structured way to do the deliberation um, and, and get that input then. Yeah. 
And that's very understandable and easy to do. Uh, what we would do is have a, what I would recommend is having a, uh, a form that we would create online and that there could be a link on the website so we can provide the bios of the candidates and a link to the feedback. And we can keep that open um, 24 hours after the interviews and then gather it and provide that to you. So, and I think that's a great way for them to really see how they interact with the board um, and provide feedback. So I think that would keep things relatively simple since we, we do have a, it'll be a, a busy day for everybody. So that's, those are great ideas. Um, Alec and, and um, Jacqueline, I can't see you. I, I, I don't want to leave you out. Um, nope, I, I'll, I'll chime in if I have further questions. Okay. Me as well, thank you. Okay. I oh. have a question. Uh, go ahead. Well, we have an opportunity to um, talk to, see the candidates in person before we make a decision or no. Um, if we, if we bring people on site for the sixth and they're local, um, then they could attend the meeting live, um, or it could be via zoom. So there's an opportunity to meet the candidates on October 6th. There's also the opportunity to bring back, a, you know, a, one or two finalists before you meet them. So you, you have definitely have a few options there. Uh, Trustee Vogel. I could, I could envision, I, I support Clerk Flintoff's notion. It felt like a lot to put this all together on the 6th. So the staff day the 6th, the board's interview of the 7th, potentially keep all those parallel by keeping them all on Zoom. Then we have board data, we've got staff data. It's not clear to me yet where the community input is, so I want to talk more about that. And it sounds like we're potentially bringing a smaller number of candidates back that we could potentially be doing at the board meeting on the 12th. And that might be the time to bring them in person or what? Um, so I, I think just to add one clarifying question and then I'll let, um, but I, I would see that the meeting on the 12th is a deliberation and that we would bring them back at some point after that. Yikes. So the deliberation might narrow the field, but not arrive at a, a final decision is what you're saying. That could be an outcome. Yes. It would actually be the first time we would be deliberating on any of this, like Let's say, because I'm sure there's some people we're bringing back that, you know, like we're bringing in some people that I was a zero on. It'll be the first time, you know, that we have that deliberation, you know, of, of the gulf that's maybe there on, on certain issues or people. We won't know that until we start deliberating. That's the beauty of uh, averages. It covered it covers up the golf for a while. <laughs> so my question, um, Amy, is um, with staff, I just want to say, especially and, and, you know, again, no pressure on anybody, but insofar as people feel able or comfortable to come in person for an interview, I find that much more valuable um, to me to kind of get a sense of who they are. Um, but I would say even more importantly than the interviews being in person is any staff interaction with person, even, you know, all outside. Um, because again, when we've tried to do staff connections um, with Zoom, um, it just isn't, you know, it's hard for all of us and it's even harder for people who are not accustomed um, to using it. So I really think um, candidates need to you know, get down here, staff can, you know, assess if there's somebody who's going to roll up their sleeves or be somebody they want to work with. Yes, I, I would suggest that I am 
directed to work closely maybe with Jessica on the details of the staff experience because there's there are there will be some um, I'm not sure how many people will be in person or on Zoom. So, yeah, again, getting, uh, you know, an option on the staff side would be maybe to direct me to work closely with someone on putting together um, in person or. Yeah, I think that wants to be the three officers. Great. Great. Yeah, so I can do that. Yeah, it's important, I think, I think all three of And I do actually have one more question. Yeah. Whoops. Amy, did I, did I hear you say direct interaction? I, I mean, is there a chance other, is there a chance for us to, to talk to them personally? Would that be at the meet and greet? Just, or, or not, it's all in a group, we, there's no one-on-one -on -one component. It will, it, right now, the board interactions would be interviews um, uh, between four and 10. Um, in non-COVID times, we would often have interviews and kind of a meet, a reception where the community would be there, staff would be there, um, board members could interact informally and it really was a nice thing. Um, and the candidates would give kind of an overview introduction for everyone, uh, but just with COVID now and with seven people, it, that might be, you know, it's, it's gonna be really, it would be very, it would just not, it would be very challenging for this first round of seven people. So I do think that, um, you know, if we brought back a smaller number of people, then you really could have more of a, a reception um, where it could be outside, there could be social distancing. It would allow everybody to have that one-on-one -on -one interaction and get information and a really good feel for the candidates. Thank you. Trustee Vogel. So to just, I think I was talking over uh, Trustee Corto, so I apologize for that. I do think the three officers all have uh, distinct interfaces with staff. So I think all three bring a really important perspective to figure out what that wants to look like. And as I try to keep up here, I think I have just figured out that the, the top four and the additional three are all Michigan, fairly close. Um, okay. so just we, have one from, we have one from out of state at least. Yeah, Wisconsin. Oh, that was right. One, one's out. Yes. Man, I feel like got to go to the Excel to get the code. Got to get the code onto my note sheet. <laughs> got to get it. <laughs> so hard to track. <laughs> So I really appreciate everyone's thoroughness and, and patience with this, this process. So I think something that would be really helpful and, and I appreciate that we just decided a whole bunch of stuff together, which is a great process. If you could summarize that or send it back to us, um, that would be really helpful. Why don't, why don't we actually summarize sort of the order of these different events that we've right. sort of settled on just for, so we're all clear on it before we leave tonight. If, if you could do that, Amy, just sort of run through in sort of sequential order of, or chronological order or whatever, how they're, how they're gonna unfold on, on, in October. So on uh, Wednesday, October 6th, there will be a staff experience with the candidates, hopefully in person, and outside, um, or whatever a, combination works. Yeah, or combination. Um, and then beginning at 4 p.m., there will be 45 minute interviews with each candidate with a five minute break in between. Um, I will be determining the schedule in the next day or two, and I will send out 
a schedule to the board members along with interview guidelines, questions, in a, a summary, a note-taking sheet, um, as well as a link to provide feedback after the interviews. Um, I will be providing, uh, I will be gathering bios, biographical information of the candidates and providing that to the county, or the, I'm sorry, the township, so we can put it on the website. And that will be um, done in the next probably 48 hours. And then um, on that same link, um, so maybe there's a place on the website where in addition to the bios, we could have a link for community feedback uh, that will be opened up um, around the, on the 6th so that residents that view the board interviews can provide feedback as well. And I will happy to provide that in a, an email as well. And Right, the other couple of critical steps I heard you say was even as early as Friday, October 8th, we're getting data back from you. Yes. And then Tuesday the 12th at the BOT is the board's first opportunity at deliberation. Correct, yes. And then some to be determined date after that would be potential follow-up interviews with a smaller group. Yes. And the piece that I didn't, I'm not like slotting in with crystal clarity is I agree that trying to do some community forum, community engagement process on the 6th is too much. Where did we end up putting that? So the, the we Are did we not, yeah, I think we, I think that where we ended up for the 6th is that the community will be able to watch the interviews the public interviews and we'll be able to I provide see. feedback uh, via a survey link that we will get to the website along with the bios and other information about the candidates. Got it. Got it. So the community will definitely have input and which will be and be able to participate fully in the process going forward. I'm going to ask a quick question and then turn to Clark Flintoff. Um, I just want to clarify. So the staff experience event has all the candidates at once? No, no, no. We, we would okay. be we'll figure it out. Yep. Okay. All right. So some, somehow there's an opportunity on the six during the work day for staff to interact with the seven candidates. Um, if they can be here in person, somehow we'll sort of order that sequence so they're not all meeting with everybody all at once, but, you know, individually, um, at least the candidates individually with the staff. And if we can't bring someone in in person for some reason, we'll solve that with some kind of technology link. Yes. Okay, your question. So, um, Thank you for the recap. Amy, if you'd be so kind to include um, both Diane Benson, but also, or I guess not Diane, um, Christy Aiken on all the materials that you just described as our office coordinator to help us. Um, she'd be the person who will help um, coordinate everything for us and, and website and communications. Um, I would also say in terms of the community input, um, with the interviews on the 6th and the five minute in between, um, and this is, you don't have to, to answer now, um, but with the, with the online form, I do wonder if we might be able to kind of real time kind of input, sequence it um, with the interviews in some way. So I'm happy to work with you a little bit on that, but I would find that helpful. I mean, there's always um, public comment, but obviously we won't be doing that between every interview. So I'm thinking about some more kind of real-time written feedback from the public um, that would be appropriate. Mm -hmm. um, and I've seen that before, but 
We just have to make sure there's a appropriate way to do it. But the, if the forms are on the website and there's a way yeah. for people to comment on the website, um, people could use those that online form to give us right. feedback after the interviews on the six. Right, right. That would sort of keep it all I, I together we, in, in one yeah. sort of channel. Sure. Right. I, I, I think we have to keep it an even playing field. We're not going to have enough time in five minutes between interviews to do something to get feedback real time from residents. And to hear just a few isolated voices would, it, it, sure. it's not an even playing field. I, sure. I feel that, like we got to stick with the standard process. That, yeah, that's not what I was suggesting. I was just, um, I, I maybe I wasn't clear enough, but just about uh, designing the online form experience so that it's, you know, kind of cycles through um, the interviewees. So it's more, you know, prompting, you know, like American Idol, right? So. <laughs> Um, so, so we can talk about how to do that, but definitely um, the, the form so that people can go through uh, the experience with us. Um, I would also say procedurally, um, if, we, if we could, Will, I, I would just like to, since we have a special meeting called already and noticed for the 5th, I would just ask if we could make a motion to cancel the special meeting on the 5th uh, so that we can take it off of our books. Um, I, I see no reason to keep it if we've got a plan to, to do all the interviews on the 6th. Uh, would someone like to make a motion? A to, motion to cancel the meeting on the 5th? I, motion by Flintoff, support by... I'll support. Support by Noel to cancel uh, the special meeting currently scheduled for October 5th. Okay, Hathaway? Yes. Palmer? Oh, yes. We, need, we need discussion. Oh, pardon me. Go ahead, Will. Um, Trustee Bogle. Okay, never one to be the party pooper here, but God, I almost hate to say this. Do we need to reserve that time to continue work on uh, rules of order? No. <laughs> we have enough on our plate really that week. It was really hard to suggest that. <laughs> well, I think that the problem with doing anything with that meeting is that uh, trust, Trustee Noel has already indicated that she cannot attend on that occasion. Okay. So I would be I would be reluctant to schedule something as substantive as that. It's a bad thing for her. Totally support that. Thank you. So are there any other comments before we call the roll? Please call the roll. Pathway? Yes. Palmer? Yes. Flintoff? Yes. Porto? Yes. Jerome? Yes. Noel? Yes. Vogel? Yes. Motion passes. Special meeting of the 5th is canceled. Okay. Have we, um, Amy, if I may, have we addressed all of the questions that you needed us to, to tackle for this evening? Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, can can I just clarify one more thing? Is Diane Ben uh, Supervisor Hathaway? Is Diane Benson still in the loop, or she's kind of gone now? So who's the primary interface with Amy? Is that you, or how's that working now without Diane in the loop? Um, I I think Diane has continued to you know sort of yeah, try to try to wrap up some of these well, things absolutely. that she got started. So she's she's still. Um, you know, sort of seeing these things through. She, I, she has, she's very dedicated that way. Um, and and she recommended that Christy, um, you know, run point with Amy too for coordination stuff. So, I mean, you know, hopefully we'll we'll have somebody else on soon. But um, unfortunately, her contract ended. All right. I, I think it's just an important point of clarity because, for as much as we all respect Diane. One ground rule she said is that we not all barrage in with a bunch of questions. And so I think it's important to keep the discipline established of a point person for the interface. Yeah. So well, let's make so it is that Diane. I, I don't think it can be Diane. No, she's, I, I, she's I, on vacation. She's not really regularly available. I'd recommend Christy as a steady person this year for the township. All right, so maybe it's Christy and the supervisor of the township lead as the two interfaces. 
That's fine. I, I think at this point, we're mostly dealing with kind logistics. Of logistics. And I think right. you know, Christy is probably the best person to, right. to to make those kinds of arrangements. But I guess if there's if there's questions that require something other than that, um, then I can I can serve as a, a connection. Um, but um, Diane, just to clarify, Diane still is helping, but I think it's it's best not to make her the liaison since yeah. she's no longer employed by the township. Are there other questions or clarifications that people are seeking? No. Oh, um, thank you very much, Amy. Um, looking forward to sort of um, this next phase, um, but, um, you know, very good work pulling together this um, group of candidates. I, I do want to say I'm, all of them, you know, had strengths. Um, I think, you know, it was in some cases it was sort of difficult, but and, and I, I some of them clearly we liked, we just liked them for other jobs um, than township <laughs> administrator. Can we get their dibs on talking to them about another job? Yeah. <laughs> also, I will pass that along. And Amy, I was wondering how, like in your in your mind, you know, how is how how did this recruitment like? Did it bear as good of a crop as you would hope for, or what? Yeah, I, I think this really sells the strength of the township. Um, mm -hmm. We, I think, we had a. This is the most candidates I've ever presented. Wow. Um, so that, yeah, there's sometimes it does not go this well. So I'm, and I'm, I'm thrilled that there are seven candidates that are of interest coming, of coming back. And there were even more that, you know, um, at least one person was interested in. So um, this makes me very happy. So, um, you know, it's, that we've got, you know, the, some good options and it'll, and this, so this is going well, but again, I really think it speaks to the desirability of your community and it's uh, South Township's an amazing place to work and live and play and has so many assets. And um, I think that's, it's been a pleasure to market this opportunity and um, get people excited about it. Well, thank you very much. Um, I, I think that brings us then to the end of the of that part that part of our agenda, which I think brings us to public comment. Okay. And um, thank you so much, Amy. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank My you. Pleasure. Thank you. You're you're welcome to stay in with public comment if you're interested. Just in case it's related to the search, I will. Yeah. I'm all ears. Yes. Great. Thank you. So um, let's see. So are there any interested members of the public? And uh, Alec, are you available to serve as yep. timekeeper? Yes. Okay, I see one Zoom hand, Rob Pattinson. Rob? Thank you, Rob Pattinson, 500 North Z. I've got two questions. First question is, I would recommend, well, it's not a question, it's a recommendation that you proceed with a second uh, interview. So that does two things. It takes the pressure off the board thinking they have to make a decision on one 45 minute interview. And also this is an executive level position. And I haven't heard of executive level positions uh, being filled on one 45 minute interview. And then thirdly, this is a vital and critical and maybe the most important decision you'll make as a board, because this could have an impact on the township for the next 20 years. So this is a critical person that is needed to fill this position. My second point is I've been recording meetings for as a service for the SIO Township uh, Community News website and uh, this is more of a question for Amy, maybe for Jessica, in terms of I'm not interested in damaging someone's career by recording and posting a video that um, doesn't protect their anonymity because six of these people, potentially seven, are going to go back to their current positions and I don't want to damage anyone's career by recording a meeting. Thank you. Um, 
maybe at the end if there's yeah. more. There is. That's is that it? Correct. Yeah, go ahead, go right ahead. Um, Rob, uh, one thought on that is, um, you know, at the point that we do, at the point that we do interviews, um, the confidentiality would be lifted. Amy is managing that with all of the um, candidates. So anybody, you know, any number of the seven who are still interested and want to move forward to the interview stage will know that it's public and will understand. Will will have communicated whatever they need to communicate. Um, so we would, um, you know, record and post these just as we normally do other board meetings. So I I really think that it it wouldn't be um, they they would have already notified whoever they needed to notify about their um, pursuit of this job, pursuit of this job. There are no other public comments. Um, motion to adjourn. So moved. moved by Palmer. Seconded by Vogel. Please call the roll. Hathaway? Yes. Palmer? Yes. Lintoff? Yes. Porto? Yes. Jerome? Yes. No? Yes. Vogel? Yes. Motion passes, meeting adjourned, 9.15. Wow. Good night, everybody.